That's a great song because in case I forget to say it, it just reminds us of our main point from last week. That God is so big, he speaks everybody's language. He really does. And so I talked about Jesus, the Magi, and the stranger at the door. And so I said three things last week about that. I said that Jesus is near. I said a lot more than three things, but my main three ideas I said at the end. That Jesus is near. Mystery is good. It's okay to not know the answers. And the stranger at the door might be the very person we need in our life to help us take the next step. And so when I said Jesus is near, I said he also speaks your language. And in the song we just sang, Cuán grande es Dios, how great is our God, and it had some lines like it said, the lion and the lamb, and words like that. They're word pictures that maybe you didn't understand. Maybe you did. But those word pictures translate for different people different ways. I don't mean translate the word, but they speak to people if they know the Old Testament history or the New Testament writings. And so there are words there, and sometimes in the songs or pictures from the scriptures or from Christian experience. And we say, that's a weird song. And then we realize it may be speaking somebody else's language. And so God speaks everybody's language. I mean, he sent Joseph a dream. He sent Mary an angel. He sent the Magi a star. You know, sometimes we don't hear him. Say, well, God speaks everybody's language. I don't know if he's speaking my language. I don't hear him. Well, (laughs) the Bible says he comes close to the humble, but he resists the proud. I found that most of the times when I am proud, I resist it if somebody else tells me. Say, well, you know, you have a lot of ego. Say, no, I don't. And so if we want to hear from God and experience his presence, the Bible says the first thing is a little more humility, a little less pride. You know, mystery helps us with that. When there's mystery, I said mystery's good, mystery's okay. Mystery means we don't have to have all of the answers. We don't have to understand everything. Paul wrote that even if we could understand all the mysteries and have all the knowledge, 1 Corinthians 13, we would still need love. In fact, he said, knowing all mysteries, having all knowledge without love is actually meaningless. Meaningless. All that wisdom, all that intelligence, meaningless without love. God's love is greater than knowing everything. That's an amazing, profound insight. You can't really, it's an easy thing to say, it's a hard thing to grasp. God's love is greater than knowing everything. And so, but love itself is a bit of a mystery. Love from God that gives your life for another. Love that serves and lifts other people up. Love that is a choice to accept and care for other people. Even when you disagree about politics or money or religion or exercise or diets. You know, if God speaks everyone's language and mystery is good, then the stranger at the door can be a good thing, like the arrival of the Magi. I mean, just think when a stranger comes in, even a person you think you know, and then they come into your space, into your life, and there's immediately some questions. Here at Christ Church, the kind of thing, it could be awkward to greet somebody. Is it one kiss or is it two? Or no kisses? Does this be a handshake or is this for a hug? Well, it can be awkward to serve snacks. All of a sudden you think, are they lactose intolerant? You translate that, Gabriel? 
Yeah. Are they vegan? Are they gluten-free? Do they take their tea with sugar or honey or some kind of sweetener? Because there's all different kinds. I don't know if I have all the right kinds. Do they put the milk in first or before the tea or after? Because that could be a thing. Should we eat what they brought or should we save that for later? Should we sit at the table or outside? Should I offer anything for the camels? Remember we were talking about the Magi. So if God speaks everyone's language, that means he talks most of the time to people in a way that you and I do not and cannot understand. If God speaks everybody's language, he's talking most of the time to people in a way that you can't understand. Now, some people in this room are really good with languages, and they speak two, three, four, five more languages. And even you would find God speaking in languages most of the time you don't understand. Now, why do I say that? Because so many times in a church, maybe someone in my position, we speak as though we know, and we, all of us, speak as though we know who God is and what he's thinking and what he's saying. And I think it's important to realize most of the time he's talking to somebody in language I can't even understand. I don't know what he's saying. I'm just curious to try a little activity here for a moment. I speak English and I speak Spanish. I have studied a little bit of a lot of different languages, but I couldn't say I speak any of them. But in this room, we speak a lot of different languages. And you always notice that and people comment on it. One time, an older person here said, why do you always talk about the diversity in the room? Why can't we talk about the unity? Like we're all here together, the body of Christ. And I said, because diversity is not a bad thing. It's actually an incredible, it's an incredible thing. And so if you speak a language that is not English and it's not Spanish and you like speak it, you don't just know three words, then say to us, say to everybody in here, just we'll do a little dynamic, like raise your hand and then say, God speaks my language. Or if you don't have a word for that, then find something similar and tell us a sentence in your language. We just want to hear the different languages and sort of capture the fact that God's speaking all these different languages. Like Raj, help us out. Start us off. What? If God speaks that language? Thank you, Raj. Do you have something different, Pramila? No? Maxime? Oh, you want Cynthia to do it. Go ahead, Cynthia. <laughs> yeah. Christopher, then. Say that again, I couldn't hear you. Okay. I believe you. Somebody else. Edison? Edison. Edison. Maxine? Moses? Okay. <laughs> Emmanuel? Yeah. Say that again. Salim? Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. Tell me your name. Cynthia. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Yeah. Somebody else? Charity? You have something else? No. Mateo? Say that again. Okay. Julie? Say that again. Okay. <laughs> Not trying to embarrass anybody. Uh, uh, uh. Somebody, okay. Davy? Davy? Okay. Some more people recognize that. Somebody else? Uh, Afrikaans? We haven't heard any Afrikaans. I don't know. Take your word for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have something else, Fabian? No? David, you have a different? No? <laughs> Anybody? When? <laughs> yeah? Okay. Maxime? Say David again. Hindi, okay. Okay, so just think in just a moment here. I mean, isn't that pretty cool? That's pretty amazing. And maybe somebody didn't say a language. I don't, I don't really know. <clears throat> God speaks all the different languages. And not just the words, because if we broke it down, we say, you know, some people are artists. And God speaks through art. And some people are musicians, and God speaks to them through music. And some people outside, they're just amazed at the beauty of nature. And so people are, and some people are architects, and they can see design. Or in all different kinds of things, and God can speak to us through that. Some people are writers, or they express themselves with words. So all the different ways. But it's very profound to think that God is speaking and working in ways I don't even know about. I don't even understand. And so the way that other people are hearing and listening and learning can be very different from mine. So think of this. God often spoke to ancient Israel through prophets and poetry and priests, but mostly through prophets and poetry. And he spoke to them through natural disasters and world events. And they recorded things and they said, God said, you and I mostly don't speak those languages, prophecy and poetry. And, you know, we start talking about natural disasters and people, you know, is God really speaking through that? How? And so lots of people today talk about prophecy. And, but often they have a strong financial interest and they create fears to promote their books and the things that they're teaching. It's a common thing in the church in, in my country, in the States, and I think in some other places as well. A prophecy is not bad. God used prophecy to speak to the Magi. These guys, they weren't even Jews. They weren't even from that history. They didn't even share the same holy books but they had looked and studied and found out about these scriptures. So how did God connect with the Magi? He used a star in the sky. God did some really strange things to connect with people. So why do I say that? I say that because I want us to be thinking in our community, in our culture, in our diversity, in our crazy world, I want us to remember that God sometimes, maybe often, does the unexpected. That means what you and I think God should do or will do, 
He does something completely different. So a star in the sky to these people far away. How about this? A miracle baby to the young virgin Mary. I mean, that's kind of an awkward, weird way to connect with Mary. How about faithful Joseph? Gives faithful Joseph a pregnant fiance. How about putting the Messiah in a manger? Or sending the shepherds who belong out in the fields on a treasure hunt through town? So God does some like hard to understand things. He rescued baby Jesus from crazy King Herod by turning his family, by sending Joseph and his family as refugees into Egypt. He spoke to the Magi in a dream. He spoke to Joseph in his dream. I believe God still uses prophecy. He speaks through dreams and poetry and world events and natural disasters, but I don't pretend to understand it all. I know that some people actually prefer when the pastor says, I was studying this week and God told me, and then I share the things that I'm going to tell you. And some people don't like that at all. I'm the person that doesn't really like that. I think I should study I think I should come. I think I should try to hear from the Lord and study the message. But today we live in a world where there's so much manipulation and there's so much fake news that the last thing we need is somebody, a pastor or somebody else imposing God said, because how are you going to argue against God? So I feel that my job, and this is related to the dynamic we have in this community, is not to impose but to invite. God uses unexpected, unpredictable, unusual events and people. So I understand that my role as a pastor is to accompany people through life's journey. I'm not the problem solver. I used to think that I was. I learned from reading Eugene Peterson, I'm not the problem solver. I'm a fellow traveler. I'm a guide to help make sense of things, but I'm not a guard put here to enforce the rules. So Christian educator, a man who was a Christian educator named Parker Palmer, captured the gospel for me well. He captured it well in a phrase, which is a title of one of his short but excellent books. And the book is called, Let Your Life Speak. Let Your Life Speak. So Francis of Assisi is supposedly said, preach at all times and when necessary, use words. It's the same kind of thing. In other words, your life, your attitudes, your actions, your emotional impact on other people, that's the primary love language that God wants to use. Right answers may exist, but right answers are secondary to love compassion, humility, grace, peace, faith, joy. This is really important because God's love is primary. God's love is the most important thing. God's sovereignty is secondary. The most important thing is not that God is sovereign. And that's what we learn from Jesus and the Magi and the stranger at the door. God is sovereign. He can do because he's God. He can do whatever he needs to do. But when he came to the manger, he laid his sovereignty aside. He took off the king's crown and he said, I'm going to relate to this world in a different way. And so the gospel is never about authority, submission, hierarchy, or any specific culture or language or denomination. The gospel is about God's love expressed in Jesus' life, and it's passed on through our love for, our, for each other, for ourselves, by the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit. So God's love is primary. 
Now I have one more really fun lesson I think we can learn from the Magi. And next week I've got a couple more because this is just a great story. And last for the last several weeks we've been reading the story of Jesus' birth from Luke. Then we studied it, a group of us, and we read the story last week at least of the coming of the wise men. And as you remember that story, all the way from Zechariah in the temple going in and meeting an angel, and the angel said, your wife's going to have a baby. And he said, my wife's too old. And how can that happen? And they said, well, it's going to happen. And since you doubted, you're not going to be able to talk until the baby's born. And then when the angel came to Mary and said, look, even your 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 relative Elizabeth's going to have a baby in her old age. That's like a miracle. It is a miracle. And Mary said, is it true? And so she went to see Elizabeth and Elizabeth said, oh, and you know, the story, the joy that the women shared. And how did Elizabeth know that Mary was pregnant and expecting the baby and all of these things? Then the angel appears to Joseph and says, really, it's okay. You can take Mary to be your wife. What she told you is true. And Joseph decided to believe that. And then they have to go to Bethlehem and, and they're there and the angels appear in the field and speak to the shepherds. And then all of a sudden there's a whole multitude, like a whole group singing. And I said, the historians say, well, when the Caesar celebrated his birthday, he would get a whole choir. And so when Jesus was born, the, the angelic choir came and people say, well, that's one of the reasons Luke made sure he included that detail that Jesus' birth was kind of like Caesar only opposite, but here's a the king coming, but he's laid aside his crown. Am I going too fast, Gabriel? Doing okay? Sorry, I got inspired. So all of these things are happening. And the wise men come, the magi, and the shepherds come, and the people in Jerusalem are talking about it, and the teachers of the law are studying and then later, Jesus is born. We didn't read this part, but at the eighth day, Mary and Joseph take Jesus up to the temple. And there's an older lady in the temple, Anna, and she's always been serving there. And she recognizes this is the Messiah. And then Simon, um, Simeon, an older priest has been there. He said, this is the Messiah. Now I can rest in peace. He's like, my life is fulfilled having seen the baby. All of these things happen. What's your favorite part of the story? You don't have to answer me, just think. What's your favorite part of the whole story? One part. Hmm. I wonder, what is the biggest surprise for you? in all of that story. What is the most unexpected thing that happens? I wonder if you're surprised by the way God communicated with these people. It wasn't the usual way, didn't appear to be. Angels and dreams and stars in the night sky and angelic choirs. And some of the people, we don't know how they knew. Simeon or Elizabeth or Anna. Old people, young people, local people, foreign people, traditional people, non-traditional people. So is it surprising the way he communicated? Is it surprising the people he brings to the party? Now, I think God loves surprises. That's part of the Magi. So church, sometimes religious people like me can always be serious. It's like we forget to have fun. And it seemed like God was having fun with this thing, sending his angels. Can you imagine, does that, do any of you have lists where it's like the to-do list, to-do, what you have to do, and or somebody makes it for you? Can you imagine God organizing his calendar and his list? And he writes it and he says, hmm, okay, Gabriel, I need you to talk to Zacharias but not until we need to make sure that Zacharias' number comes so he's the one that goes in the temple that day and he's trying to figure that out. But which day? And Gabriel's like, okay, wait a second. Which day is it? it Zacharias, which one is he? He's the one with the beard. Okay, yeah. And so they're talking and they're making the plans and which night are the shepherds? Are they these shepherds or the ones on the other hill? Like which hill? 
And, and God's looking down. And he said, and the, and the star, the star has to come out and make sure these guys see it. Sorry, Gabriel. <laughs> Stop laughing. Start translating. <laughs> Entonces, Dios está organizando su agenda y mandando todas las cosas, tratando de recordar. So God is, you know, just, it's a humorous take on it. But God is loving these surprises and the ideas he has for accomplishing his purposes. Well, maybe in 2020, maybe there's going to be a surprise for you. And so sometimes we think of surprises as bad news. Something bad is waiting to happen. In this case, some hard things happened. But when you look back and you realize God was in control, the Magi had to take a long trip. Jesus had to escape out of there. I mean, who knows if some of the shepherds lost their job because they weren't watching the sheep. I mean, we don't know all the things, but God was in control. And the story eventually had a really happy ending. And God is in control for your life. And he may have some surprises, and it could come in a very unexpected way. Well, I want to say something about this church and some good news that's coming and to help us to keep getting ready. On the first Sunday of February, we'll have some new musicians here, and they're Ethan and Emily. Ethan and Emily are Americans. And they visited this church. Nate had met Ethan and when they were studying in Costa Rica. And then Ethan married Emily and they came here and visited. And they said, we will like to come back and see if we can support or help or be a part. Work on our Spanish. Ethan speaks Spanish. And just participate. And they loved the church and they wanted to check it out. And we said, yeah, come. They found their own resources. They quit their jobs. And they're taking a six-month adventure, really for them it's like eight months, and they're going to be part of our community from February to August. And I'm really excited. They're good musicians. They're fun people. They're young. They're going to help with the, um, with the young people, with, with all the different things. They're just coming to help and encourage, and we're going to help and encourage them. That's the goal. They're going to go from here better. And we're going to be better because they came. And a couple of weeks later, Gianfranco and Natalie are arriving, who we, we met before and we know them and they know us. And they're coming and they're going to come for 10 months. And remember, just a month ago, we were talking about, do we have the financial backing and the interest from this community to say, hey, they need to come? Because Ethan and Emily come with their own resources. And Natalie and Gianfranco are coming, helped by the resources here and some friends outside the church, but primarily with, with our help. And they're coming also to learn, but to support. And I don't know what surprises we'll have, but we'll have some. And uh, Natalie and Gianfranco, I often call him Jeff. I didn't invent that. They invented that for him in the UK, in England. But... Um, Gianfranco, and they're going to be supporting and helping with the youth and the sound and behind the scenes. Several people have asked me, like they asked me in the past when we'd have an intern. Doing okay, Gabriel? You're awesome, man. Keep concentrating. It's a long thing, but we're almost done. So people say, what do you need all these extra people for? What are they coming to do? Well, they're not coming to do like... Like I need more people to do more things. They're coming here to encourage and to help and to be part of the community. And because I believe that there are some good things happening in this community and some more young people can learn from us and we need to grow in what we're doing. We could do more. We should have a program for our teenagers. There should be activities and things going on. We should have things for our young adults. There's so many more activities, but you know me, I already talked. I'm not, activities are not the most important thing to me. People are the important thing. So I very much care when a teenager 
comes here and it says, there's nothing for me. So I don't want to go. Or a young adult or all the different age groups, all the different things. And so I like diversity and I like activities because I want people to be welcomed, to be invited. And because I know that we have something here, the culture and the environment that more people need to participate, to experience in, to, to participate in and to experience. And my goal that I've shared with the pastoral team and we shared in the assembly, our goal is to keep talking and sharing and say, we need a sustainable second service that was just in Spanish. People are afraid. They said, well, I'm afraid we're going to lose this, this great service we have because we'll have just English and just Spanish. We have, we have so many people coming. If people came, if 70% of our community came on a Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, we don't fit. We just don't. And so I know that the, we need more, we don't have enough space. So we need more spaces for more people to teach, to grow, to love. We have two steps to take together. We need a loving, caring, fun environment for teenagers and young adults. And we need the sustainable second service, which means most of our members attending one and serving in one. I'm not sure how it's all going to come together. Just giving, serving, sacrificing, loving, laughing, listening, learning to trust, work through conflicts. All these skills require spiritual, emotional, and personal growth. The growth of a congregation like this, a community, is not a group thing. It's every individual. And as individuals grow, the whole place gets better. So every person does their part and grows our capacity increases every time someone um, makes that choice. So I told you Ethan and Emily, and I told you Gianfranco and Natalie, and in March, another family that I talked to and, and that was moving over from Argentina, and they're going to be arriving here the middle of March, Dave and uh, Beth. They have three kids, 11, 7, and 4. So Wonderland, get ready. And uh, three more for your groups. And uh, yeah, I'm excited about Dave coming because his specialty, trained in the States and he's been working in Argentina for a number of years, is working particularly with young people that have um, addictions and working with recovery and that kind of thing. And that's just like epidemic here and everywhere. And I said, man, come and be part of our community while you're getting so I'm excited. I think it's going to be a great year. I know there are challenges ahead. And the Jesus and the Magi and the stranger at the door, it's a magical story. It's a beautiful story. It's a well-known story. But there's messages for all of us about the way that we live every day. And so I hope that's encouraging. I hope that's inspiring. Jesus is near. Mystery is good. The stranger at the door, the people in the second service, whenever it comes, might be the person we need, the people we need to help us take the next step. And God's going to use unpredictable things. So start your year and don't plan out what God needs to do for you. Just open your mind and your heart and say, Lord, what can I do so that I can hear your voice guiding me for this year? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can trust you, that we can enjoy listening and learning together, that we can be very different, that we can understand things differently, different ideas. We don't have to be the same, but we can all learn to love and to grow in these areas and that we can discover your light and your truth and that we can trust that you, the good shepherd, will guide us through the challenges of this year. Thank you for new people who are coming, excited about being a part of this place. People that are coming, perhaps we don't know who they are. And others that are here, maybe you're just visiting or you're in transition to somewhere else. And we can know that you're working all over the world, not just here, not just this place. But we're here now 
And so this is special for us. And we just ask for more grace from you to be people of peace here where we are. In Jesus' name, amen.